Taxi driver sees a girl alone at midnight on the road and picks her up, but seeing her ID, he calls the cops. John had always considered the streets of the city as a maze of memories, intertwined with the pulsing life of the present. Each turn and junction had its own story to tell, and today, an unexpected detour due to a road accident brought back memories he had tried so hard to push away. His taxi's headlights lit up the police barricades, the flashing red and blue lights giving an eerie glow to the scene of the accident. An ambulance, its siren wailing, rushed past him. John felt a shiver run down his spine. It was not just the sight of the wreckage that disturbed him, but the date. It marked the anniversary of his own daughter, Emily's tragic passing. It felt as if fate was playing a cruel trick on him, making him relive those painful moments once again. Grief was a tricky thing. It never really went away. It just hid behind the mundane activities of daily life, ready to pounce when least expected. The roads he drove every day, the routes he knew like the back of his hand, all held shadows of his past. And today, that shadow loomed larger than life. The giggles of Emily, the way her face lit up every time he got home, and that fateful night when everything changed were all playing out in his mind like a movie he couldn't pause. Taking a deep breath, John decided to take a longer route to avoid the accident site. He wanted to distance himself from the turmoil of emotions the scene had evoked. As he turned into a less familiar road, he noticed a lone figure standing under a flickering street lamp. It was a little girl, no older than eight, with jet black eyes that seemed to pierce the night. She was clutching a teddy bear in one hand and a suitcase in the other, standing motionless, her gaze fixed intently on the road. John's heart skipped a beat. What was a child doing alone at this hour and on such a night? He pulled over, rolling down the window. The cold wind carried whispers of the night, and for a moment John was taken aback by the girl's silence. She looked at him, her eyes mirroring a depth of sadness that seemed far too heavy for her young age. Hey there, John called out gently. Are you lost? The girl named Lucy didn't answer but continued to watch the road as if waiting for someone or something. Her silence wasn't the petulant quiet of a child upset, but something deeper, almost reflective. John's instincts as a father kicked in. He couldn't leave her alone, especially not on a night like this. Come on, he said softly, opening the door to the back seat of his taxi. I'll take you home. Lucy hesitated for a split second before climbing into the cab, her teddy bear and suitcase following suit. As John drove, he couldn't help but glance at her from time to time through the rearview mirror. Who was she? Where had she come from? Why was she alone? The journey was silent except for the low hum of the taxi engine and the rustling of leaves outside. Lucy's presence was a stark contrast to John's early reminiscence of Emily, yet there was an uncanny connection. Both were young souls, lost in a vast world looking for a way back home. And for John, this unexpected encounter was a reminder that life, despite its sorrows, still held moments of unexpected grace. John had always believed in intuition, a gut feeling that sometimes guided his actions beyond logic or reason. As he glanced again at the girl named Lucy in his rearview mirror, her silent, brooding presence stirred something deep within him. The mystery surrounding her, her unexpected appearance on such a significant night, and her resemblance to Emily, it was all too uncanny. Pulling the taxi to a stop at a quiet corner, John turned to Lucy with a gentle smile. Hey, Lucy, he began. I'm going to take a quick photo of you, okay? Maybe someone out there knows you or your family. Lucy met his gaze with her intense, jet-black eyes, but offered no objection. John took out his cell phone and, with a quick snap, captured Lucy's image, her porcelain face lit eerily by the dim lights of the taxi's interior, with the teddy bear's stitched eyes mirroring her own. He quickly shared the photo on a local community page, captioning it with a simple request for information about the mysterious girl. Within minutes, concerned comments from strangers started pouring in, but none had any concrete information. Driving towards his home, the weight of the evening and the strange coincidence played heavy on John's mind. As he entered his driveway, the familiar silhouette of his wife, Molly, came into view, waiting for him. Her warm, comforting presence was a stark contrast to the cold memories of the night and the enigmatic aura of Lucy. 
John hurriedly got out of the taxi and, taking Lucy by the hand, led her towards Molly. Molly, he began, his voice heavily with emotion, this is Lucy. Found her on the road tonight, all alone. Molly's maternal instincts kicked in immediately. Oh, dear, you must be freezing. Come inside. As the trio moved indoors, John briefly narrated the night's events to Molly, ending with the eerie coincidence of it being Emily's death anniversary. Molly looked at Lucy, then back at John, her eyes reflecting a mix of sympathy and concern. It's almost as if the universe is trying to tell us something, she whispered. Over a cup of hot cocoa, the couple sat in their living room with Lucy wrapped in a blanket on the couch, her teddy bear still clutched tightly. The soft glow from the fireplace danced on their faces, casting long, wavering shadows on the walls. The silence was palpable, broken only by the occasional crackling of wood. John sighed. It's strange, Molly. I can't help but feel this connection with Lucy. It's as if Emily sent her to us. The timing, the way she just stood there waiting, her silence, everything feels like like a message. Molly nodded, placing a comforting hand on his. I feel it too, John. But right now, our priority is Lucy. We need to find her family, and if not, decide on our next steps. Lucy's sudden appearance on the anniversary of Emily's death was a mystery that neither John nor Molly could unravel. But, in that moment, sitting in the warmth of their home, they both felt a profound connection to the silent girl on their couch, a connection that transcended words or explanations. Whether it was fate, destiny, or mere coincidence, the universe had brought them together, and the path ahead, though uncertain, promised a journey of discovery, healing, and hope. The morning sun streamed through John's bedroom window, illuminating the teddy bear that sat eerily on the passenger seat of his taxi. Realizing Lucy must have left it behind, a pang of concern coursed through him. The silence surrounding Lucy, her teddy bear, and the memory of their encounter the previous night nudged at John's heart, urging him to find out more. With the teddy bear safely tucked under his arm, John traced the path he had taken with Lucy, trying to find any semblance of where she might have come from. The town's whispers spoke of a reclusive woman and her daughter residing in a cabin in the woods, and John felt a magnetic pull towards that direction. As the sense of tree lines swallowed him whole, John's senses were heightened. Birds chattered above, but their tweets were drowned out by the distant cries of a familiar voice. John? Lucy's voice echoed, laden with fear and desperation. His pace quickened, heart pounding, each step drawing him closer to a dilapidated cabin. The structure, weather-beaten and long forgotten by time, stood as a testament to the abandonment and despair. Pushing the creaky door open, the sight that met John was heart-wrenching. Amidst the dust, cobwebs, and broken furniture was Lucy, her face streaked with tears, crying out for him. The surroundings told a story of utter neglect, walls stained with memories, floors littered with remnants of what might have been once a life, and an air thick with hopelessness. John's emotions welled up, overpowering him. He couldn't fathom how Lucy, a mere child, had survived in such conditions. The teddy bear, a symbol of her lost innocence and her only companion, was now a beacon that had guided him to her, unveiling a tale of resilient solitude and silent cries for help. The dim interior of the cabin was laden with a heavy, suffocating silence, broken only by Lucy's intermittent sobs. John's eyes adjusted to the murky light, settling on a shadowy figure seated in the far corner. The silhouette was eerily still, a stark contrast to the vibrant child beside him. Lucy, clutching her teddy bear, pointed to the figure and whispered, That's Mama. Hoping to address the issue of Lucy's nocturnal wanderings and express his concerns about her well-being, John approached the seated figure. Ma'am, he began, clearing his throat, I found Lucy wandering the streets late at night. It's not safe for her. She needs care and attention. However, the silence that greeted him was unnerving. Drawing closer, a chilling realization gripped him. The figure, draped in faded clothes and veiled by the passage of time, was a skeletal remains of what was once Lucy's mother. The air around suddenly turned colder as the weight of the truth settled on John's shoulders. The decay suggested that she had been lifeless for an extended period, perhaps over a year. Lucy, with the innocence that only a child could possess, had not grasped the permanence of death. 
In her mind, her mother was merely ill and, with enough food and care, would be one day awakened from her prolonged slumber. This heartbreaking revelation explained her nightly sojourns into town, trying to fetch sustenance, fervently believing in her young heart that her efforts would revive her mother. The sheer weight of the child's circumstances, her unwavering hope, her nightly quest for food, and her belief in a miracle was almost too much for John to bear. This cabin, hidden away from the world, held secrets of love, loneliness, and a child's indomitable spirit to keep going, despite the insurmountable odds against her. John knelt beside Lucy, gently wrapping his arms around her. Words failed him. In that moment, surrounded by the remnants of a life once lived and the heartbreaking reality of Lucy's existence, John vowed silently to protect and care for this resilient child, who had faced the harshest of realities with a courage few could muster. In the stark administrative ambiance of the local police station, John relayed the haunting tale of Lucy's secluded life. The authorities were quick to intervene, ensuring Lucy's immediate well-being and placing her in counseling. The trauma of living alongside her deceased mother and the weight of her hopes had left emotional scars that needed addressing. Lucy's initial days in therapy were marked by silence, but slowly she began to unfold her narrative, guided by the gentle hand of her therapist. Each session was a step towards understanding and coming to terms with the unimaginable circumstances she had endured. The veil of innocence that had protected her began to lift, replaced by a slow comprehension of her reality. Throughout this period of healing, John became a constant presence in Lucy's life. He'd often visit, bringing with him toys, books, and the warmth of companionship. Their bond grew stronger, each meeting marked by shared laughter, stories, and a deepening trust. Lucy, who once hesitated to express herself, now eagerly awaited John's visits, her face lighting up every time he walked through the door. Witnessing this blossoming relationship, Molly, who had initially been a silent supporter from the background, started to engage more with Lucy. Their home, once quiet and echoing the sorrow of a lost child, began to fill with Lucy's vibrant presence, even if just during their occasional visits. Moved by Lucy's strength and resilience and the undeniable bond that had formed, John and Molly made a life-changing decision. They wanted to adopt Lucy. They longed to provide her with the security, love, and family she deserved. One sunny day, the three of them, now officially a family, visited Lucy's mother's grave. With flowers in hand, Lucy, flanked by John and Molly, spoke to her mother, sharing her new life stories. The atmosphere was thick with emotion as John and Molly reassured Lucy that she would never have to wander alone again, that they would be by her side always. Their journey, marked by grief, discovery, and healing, had brought them to a new chapter, the house echoed with laughter, love, and the promise of brighter days. Lucy, once a solitary wanderer, was now cocooned in the love of her new family, never to face the world alone again. What would you do if you had been in John's shoes?